is one of those days that you kind of get that feeling that it's one of those days. <laughs> and no matter what you do or what you try to do, you just don't feel good. You don't feel right. You feel out of touch. You feel like things just aren't quite up to snuff or up to par. You don't feel like you have made your sin in your life, or if you did sin, you committed yourself to the Lord and asked His forgiveness, because we know that if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that even if you do sin, you know that there's a consequence of separation for a time. Maybe, maybe that is what bugs you today, or maybe you're going through something like that. So maybe this will apply in your life, as well as in mine. Because we all fail in some way, at some point in time. And I know sometimes when I don't feel good, sometimes it involves sin. But you know, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I just don't feel good. And when I don't feel good, I try to take the time to back up a little bit, do some things that I think might help myself to feel better, but then I also give myself freedom to not feel good, to not feel like I'm a million bucks or that I have to put on joy when I don't feel joyful. That I don't have to put on a spiritual front, but that I can be real with you or real with my God. That I don't have to pretend who I'm not or how I feel. Because God already knows and he knows what you're going through. He probably orchestrated it in some way. There may be something that he's trying to get through to you on or something he's trying to tell you. So when you don't feel good, you don't stop what you're doing. You seek the Lord more so and then just keep going. It's just the way it is. Sometimes the body can be worn out. I know yesterday I had a wonderful time with the Lord. I was, man, I was cruising and joyful and talking about Jesus and it was exciting. It was fun. You know, even, even did Hebrews explained and did some more of the open Bible and I enjoyed it. It was a blast. It was a time of really letting God work through me and speak what he would have for us to learn because I know I was learning while I was listening and speaking the very same things that I'm sure that you heard if you were watching the tape. And if you saw it, then you know that, of course, it wasn't I that was doing it, but it was definitely the Lord. Because He has a way of making Himself known that's real obvious. It's kind of like when you have this wonderful way of everything seems to come together perfectly and Sure, you could take credit for it, I guess. I guess you could call me some kind of, like, wonderful Bible teacher or something, but while you might call me that, or while you might think that, I don't think you would convince me of that, because, you see, I know who I am. <laughs> I don't have any illusions. And... If you watch these videos long enough, you won't have any illusions either about me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But to keep ourselves from being deluded, we have to recognize that God lives in us. That God is the one who gives us words to speak in due season if we do not plan ahead of time the words we would choose to speak. In other words, we don't sit down and memorize scripture and say, oh, you know, this is what I'm going to use in my sermonette this Sunday. Well, wait a minute, some people do. Or this is how I'm going to, you know, give my talk because I've got it all outlined. Oh, wait a minute, maybe some people do. And this is the way that Jesus said to do it, but when you come up before magistrates and before the people and you get ready to think you have to say something in a certain way, then don't think about it because your father will give you what you need to speak in that moment and that you wouldn't have to plan it ahead of time. So, what are we doing planning it ahead of time? Why are we worried about what we're saying? Why do we have these 
hours of preparation, days, to give a talk on a Sunday. When Jesus said, don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit will give you what's speaking that moment. I don't know. I think that's something you'll have to answer for yourself. But I know for me, when I don't feel good, I'll take the time, you know, that I need for my body to mess around with my mind. But then I'll come back to the place that I know that I can always trust in. And that's the Lord. I'll always bring it back to my relationship with God and my devotions. I'll always go and seek to find what it is that God may be trying to tell me that maybe I haven't heard or thought of. And so today, as I don't feel good, only love lasts. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. See that only love tells. Only what is done in love lasts. For God is love, and only the work of God remains. So you see, the things that we do, or we warn, or we try to be when it comes to religion really don't matter much. Because if it's not love, and it's not about love, and it's not done in God, then it really isn't going to stay very long, is it? People will forget what it is that you might have been wanting to tell them. The theme of the world, the applause given to the one who speaks with the tongues of men and of angels, who attracts admiration and compels attention, it is all given to what is passing away and really is worthless if it lacks the God quality love. The thing that always amazed me was messages that don't have love in it, people seem to think that that has more power in it. And I see that the messages that show the love of God seem to have more effect on people. And when God's love is made manifest, then people seem to draw themselves closer to God than they would when they hear some other powerful message that's, oh, sounds awesome, but to you respond. Think how a smile or a word of love goes winged on its way, a God power sent, sent though it may seem, while the mighty words of an orator can fall fruitless to the ground. The test of all true words and words is, are they inspired by love? You know, the condemnation messages are easy to put together. Everyone can see something that they don't like and comment on it. The problem is, is that can you find things that you do like and confirm them that are about to fall apart, that maybe the person needs to be assured that the good that they're sharing is greater than the evil that is in the world. And sometimes when you just say thank you or God bless you, it goes a million miles farther than telling someone how wrong they are about something. If a man only saw how vain is so much of this activity, so much work done in my name is not acknowledged by me. As for love, turn out from your hearts and lives all that is not loving, so shall you bear much fruit. And by this shall all men know you are my disciples, because you have love towards one another. When I don't feel good, I like to say to my wife, you know, that drives her nuts is, I don't feel good. You know, and she hates that. <laughs> but it's my way of saying, hey, you know, I don't feel good. I would like you to care for me because I don't feel good. I'd like you to share with me because I don't feel good. I'd like you to know the intimacy that I need right now is to rest assured that I don't have to put on any false airs about you or to make up some feeling that I have. That you can deal with the idea that today, for whatever reason, for whatever God has in store, I don't feel like a million bucks. I don't feel like the great, overwhelming joy, joy, you know, that a lot of people seem to think you have to have on a constant basis. But what I do feel, and it's always true, is that I never have not felt the love of God. It's like an artesian well that just seems to always flow outward from inward. And God always seems to flow on me, His love, whenever I don't feel good. So 
So maybe that's a word for you. Is that, say you've blown it, you know, and you're in sin. Confess it. Say you've made a mistake. You don't want to admit it. Tell them. Say you just don't feel 100% and you're trying to make things work that just aren't working. Just say you don't feel like it. Because God has his timing. God has his purpose. God has his plan. And because he loves you, he won't let you conjure up the feelings when they aren't there. He won't let you promote something that's false. He won't let you go forward until you're ready to move again. So, be still, if you must. Rest in the Lord. Trust in his mercy and his kindness. And let him shine upon you as you recover your way, his will, his word, and his comfort by way of his Holy Spirit, as you don't feel good, maybe today, about whatever it is that God has brought your way. Because sorrow, though it may endure for but an evening, joy does come in the morning. And though that may be fleeting at times when you don't feel good, there is that promise of God that in due season, if we faint not, we shall reap. And so trust him with that promise that you will once again feel better than what you might feel today. I know I will. I have that assurance and that confidence in my God. So take it from there. If you got no other faith to believe in and just believe in that, you will feel better tomorrow if you don't feel that way today. God bless you.